In this video, we're going to take a look at Inventor 2011 Assembly Enhancements. We'll start off by looking at a new set of constraint options. Here I'll start a normal constraint. I'll grab Insert. And as you can see, I can grab my normal selections here. Type in my offset value. But down below, we have more options now. We can actually name our constraint as we're placing it. This is huge for people who like to rename their constraints. Now you don't have to do it as a separate operation. We can also set limits up for our design. So we can use our offset as a resting position and have a maximum and minimum amount for the constraint. You see when you highlight this, you have the name of the cylinder and a plus and minus behind it. Then you know that that is a limiting constraint. As you pull on the constraint item, you can see that it will return to its resting position. Another great enhancement is the assemble command. This works very similar to the old alt-drag method of constraining components, but now you also have a mini toolbar to work with you as well. Selecting geometry automatically prompts you for types of constraints that are that make sense to the type of geometry selected. If you are on part or component priority, just selecting the, the faces and edges will not work. You have to be on faces and edges in order to select the assemble command. And as you select your faces and edges, as you go along, you can also flip your options for the type that it's selected. So there it shows insert. You can also cancel it if it wasn't what you quite what you wanted. Choose assemble. Just keep placing these together. Nice, quick, and easy. This command is also intelligent enough to know if you have a conflict. So in this case, if I were to pick the green part first and try to assemble the green part to this peg, it's actually removing the green part from its position. So if I try to apply this, it's going to tell me that I am deleting or causing a suppression and a constraint. I need to do something about that. Instead of uh, performing that operation, I'll cancel it and just choose my peg first. You always want to choose the unconstrained component first. And of course you can still assemble traditionally.